This is the Tech Podcast Oops. Network. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, geeks of all ages, welcome to the show we call Geek Smack, the show where we smack the geek out of you. And today we're going to smack the geek out of Beats by Dre. We're going to talk a little bit about Beats by Dre. Um, and of course, now it's going to be called Apple Beats. And um, first of all, of course, this is the vlog section of the show. So basically, you come here to find out what's going on with my life. I'm, I'm, I kind of take it down a level and just kind of have a little bit of fun, talk to you, say hi, how's it going, and go from there. And uh, so this is basically if you're on YouTube.com forward slash Geekazine, if you don't want to hear this part, you, you fast forward the first 15 minutes. Simple as that. And then and then you can get into the tech show because we got a great tech show today. Um, some of the articles that we're gonna, I'm going to talk about today include uh, jam box pairing. Now you can get a couple different jam boxes, pair them together for a better sound. Uh, Twitter mute, the YouTube RSS shutdown, and kind of shutdown, kind of not shutdown. Gmail redesign that's happening. Google uh, um, European Union loss, color changing fabric, all that other good stuff, and lots of tech. And of course, we're going to talk about Apple Beats. And I'm, I'm actually pretty excited that Apple took away Beats um, and uh, and is going to do something. And it will, uh, it's very intriguing to see how the iPhone, how the iPad, how the MacBook, and all other devices, and maybe even iTunes, gets affected by a, uh, uh, Beats by, uh, Beats Music and Beats by Dre. So you, and you're thinking to yourself, well, is that going to actually affect that? And yeah, I think it will. And uh, and so much more. So, But anyway, how you doing? Is this is the first time that you've come to this show live? Well, thank you very, very much for coming to the show live. We do this live every single Tuesday uh, at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time when I'm in town. Of course, last week I was in New York City for TechCrunch Disrupt, and I got a lot of great video. Lots of awesome stuff that happened at TechCrunch Disrupt. I'm really excited on um, some of the startups that I got to meet, some of the programs that I got to interview, um, and a couple that I have a feeling are actually going to be the next acquisitions of Facebook, the next uh, the next purchases of uh, of uh, uh, you know that you'll be using on a daily basis. Um, one uh, that that is very notable is called Notable, and uh, they, it, it's a different way to actually communicate with people. And I was really excited about that. Some of the stuff for, for women tech out there, a uh, bracelet that can actually vibrate to tell you that you got a phone message. That was awesome. There's a company um, called Style Lend will let you rent out dresses, lend out dresses. And actually, if you've got dresses in your closet and you want to send, you want to rent them out, all you have to do is set up an account with Style Lend and you can do that. And I thought to myself, this would actually be pretty cool for a dressmaker. Because then they can make dresses specifically for style lend, and then turn around and and put them on there. So you would you would then rent the dress, uh, the designer dress. We're talking thousand dollar dresses here for like a hundred dollars a day. So not too bad. But anyway, uh, so that was pretty cool. Lots of great stuff, and of course. All the video is over at TechCrunch, uh, at uh, Geekazine, youtube.com forward slash Geekazine, of course, geekazine.com. Um, and of course, uh, you know, I'm going to show you some of the pictures uh, that uh, came with uh, with coming to, wow, that, why did that uh, start there? Anyway, uh, some of the pictures that came, <clears throat> excuse me, that came with, uh, with this. So we're going to start here and uh, we'll just go through the slideshow. So it was a fun time in New York. I got a lot of pictures of New York City Times Square. Um, uh, of course, that's the uh, Rockefeller uh, thing right there. Lots of fun. Uh, went into the Disney store and Amazing Spider-Man 2 uh, displays up. A uh, couple of vehicles, uh, cars that I saw on the way there. Um, this is Duncan, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Benedict. I'm sorry. He he uh, he was part of South by Southwest and, uh, and stuff like that. So lots of great stuff in New York. Had fun, but <laughs> the biggest problem, yeah, that's a big rat. Uh, the biggest problem is that uh, I actually hurt my back when I got back. It is, you know, it's just one of those things that, you know, I probably put too much stress on myself. I basically went, I, I had a 40 pound backpack on and I was walking the streets of New York with that backpack. So when I got back, my, ba my back just kind of said, no, nope, I'm kind of done. 
let's just take a, a rest here. And so it wasn't bad enough for I was bedridden or anything like that, but it definitely did hurt. And I do have to apologize to Jennifer because she uh, she had to take the brunt of, of that pain. There's me right there, by the way. Uh, she had to take a brunt of that pain uh, because of the fact that I'm, I couldn't do half the stuff there. So I'm, I'm going to have to catch up there and uh, and go. So, But it was a fun time. Lots of great pictures. You can find all these pictures over on plus.google.com forward slash plus Jeffrey Powers. Um, this one, this one's interesting. I'm going to pause this for a second. We'll go back. This, what they did was they uh, they did a, a camera shoot for a, a game show that they're coming out with called the 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 World's Best Man or something like that. And so I spent a, a few minutes watching the, them do the commercial for this on Times Square. It was pretty interesting. So, um, but of course, like I said, all the pictures you can find over at plus.google.com forward slash plus Jeffrey Powers. Just go into the show notes and click on the Google Plus part there and you'll be able to get there. So lots of cool stuff there. New York was a blast. I stayed in New Jersey with, for the first time, which was really cool. Um, they had a shuttle bus. Now there's there's a series of hotels just outside the Lincoln Tunnel. And I stayed at the Holiday Inn Express. I was very happy with my stay at the Holiday Inn Express. Very, very happy. because uh, The first night I actually stayed at another hotel, um, which I'm not going to talk about because it was horrible. But, you know... Um, it, 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 uh, there were, there were a lot of bad things about it and, uh, I would not suggest that you stay there, but I'm not going to say what the name of the hotel is, but maybe Howard, Mr. Howard would do that. Um, uh, Mr. Johnson would do that too. I don't know. So anyway, uh, so, uh, I ended up switching my hotel room to the uh, Holiday Inn Express. I was really happy with that hotel. Um, stayed there the rest of the week, and uh, I got I got good treatment on that. But the best part is they have a shuttle bus that went from the uh, uh, through the Lincoln Tunnel to uh, Times Square and back. There were certain times you had to get on, and uh, we uh, we went, I went back and forth, and that's and I saved pretty much three hundred dollars a night by taking this bus. So I was really happy about that result. There got into Times Square about. I'd say about eight, nine o'clock, nine o'clock was, and uh, walked to uh, the uh, Manhattan Center, which is where the event was, which is across the street from uh, Penn Station. So it was about, well, we we were, were dropped off at 41st Street and 7th, and then we went, I walked to 34th and 8th, I think it was. So, uh, you know, it was, it was a little bit of a walk, but it wasn't too bad. Wasn't too bad at all. So, uh, except for the fact that my back just kind of revolted after the show. So, lots of great video. You can find it all over at geekazine.com. You can find it at youtube.com forward slash geekazine and go from there. I'm excited because Charter Spectrum is now on the map here. And, uh, and, uh, and, and I started reviewing it and I got a little bit disappointed for Charter Spectrum. They, they boosted my internet speed to 60 megs per second download. Unfortunately, they kept the upload speed at four megabytes per second. And it was like, what? I just, I really, all I really need is two more megabits per second. Six megabit per section, a second upload connection. I can start really pushing this feed here on the, uh, up, to, in, uh, up to YouTube. I can even possibly do a 1080 feed if I had six megabits per second, but four megabits per second, I can use 1.5 and therefore a 720p uh, feed. But then again, this MacBook's really starting to show its age because of the fact that when I'm uploading this, it, uh, and, and then I, and, and I'm, I have to do the record and stream because if I do the stream, then I have to download that from YouTube. I then have to splice it up to take out this uh, this uh, vlog section and then take the rest of it and put it up. And by doing that, sometimes it would take me to 10, 11 o'clock at night. Whereas if I hit the record button here, copy over the file over to the computer, let it, let it process through because uh, I have to make it smaller because uh, Wirecast makes like a three gigabyte file and I have to, I have to dumb it down to about at least 1.5 gigabytes. So, and then I can put it up on blip.tv and then, then you have it for your televisions at a 720p rate. 
Um, otherwise, and that usually takes me uh, a couple hours. So by four or five o'clock in the evening, my the video's up, the audio's up, and you're good to go. But uh, it's it, 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 it's tough. So with Charter Spectrum, I was really hoping to get like you know more up upload bandwidth so i can do some more stuff and i didn't get that it was really disappointed but the download speeds are awesome so uh it's kind of give and take i, I really wish that they uh, they uh, that they pump it up just two mega six megabits per second i'll be a happy camper for at least right now so um but anyway uh so that that's that's going on there uh of course like i said the uh the the back seized up but before that the day, I, the day I got back, the day after I got back, which is Friday, me and my brother went garage sale. We love to garage sale. And we love that whole process of, of going and finding some stuff. And we hit a honey hole um, in uh, this last day because uh, we found two totes worth of action figures. Still, in, Some of them are still in the box. Some of them had slightly broken... Uh, seals on their on their packaging and then a couple couple figures were just completely out of the box so um, we found a whole bunch of spawn figures and we found a whole bunch of star wars figures this is uh 19 about uh, when they came back about 1995 when they reintroduced star wars to us um in in characters to get ready for the movies and stuff like that so we've got a lot of figures that we need to time we need to uh, we're, we're going to be getting rid of and of course, we need to time it so we can make money off the deal because we got them for a good price. But oh, we're going to try and flip them, see how that works. Um, but you know, it, it's it's really cool. It was great. It was our first garage sale of the season. I got a couple other cool things. Um, replaced the CRT in the bedroom with a Samsung. I think it's a twenty a twenty inch uh, uh, screen TV. It's in, it's pre HDMI, so it's got a DVI cable. So. I can I can hook up the DVI and then I have to 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 shoot the audio out into the uh, TV. Um, I'm I'm trying to figure out how to hook up the Roku in the living room in the bedroom so we can use the Amazon Fire TV in in the living room and then the Roku in the bedroom to watch movies and stuff like that. So working on that, trying to figure out the way because I have to a uh, DVI to HDMI cable does not push audio. So I would need to find some sort of switching box that would not only do uh, DV, or I'm sorry, HDMI, but also audio, uh, or a way to pull the audio from the uh, the HDMI cable to use that. So once I figure that out, then I'll be able to hook up the Roku and go from there. So, all right, what else happened? Uh, last night's twig, this week in Google Glass, of course, I got the I got my new pair of Google Glass right before uh, right before I left for New York. So I technically have my old pair of Google Glass sitting right here. Look at this. I got double pair. I got to send these back in the next day or two. Um, but uh, I also got the new the new uh, shades, which now I'm, I'm calling these, you know, I called these previous shades the Oakley pair because they look like 1980s Oakleys when I put them on to my Google Glass. Here, I'll show you. I have two, two demo models, so I'm going to show you. So this is the... Uh, this is this. Let's let's zoom it in a little bit. We'll tighten it in so you can see. So, okay. This is the 1980s pair of Oakleys. And now with this new style, which I got, they kind of look like, do you remember in the 90s, we got uh, blue blockers? That's what these look like is the blue blocker pair. So I, I've, I've upgraded to blue blockers from Oakleys. Of course, I get to keep the shades. I got to send back the glass. And I'll be doing that in the next couple days. And uh, so I will, I, I, I'm, I, I like this look. I, I use this look around New York City. I was really happy and, and it looked great. And uh, nobody really bothered me. In fact, I'm going to post an article about my experience of using Google Glass in New York City. Uh, because there's been a lot of negative articles about Google Glass. And, and this one's going to be pretty positive on there. So... Uh, what else? Uh, so last night's the this week in Google Glass, we talked a lot about n the news, and we've also found out that it takes it, it's. Uh, there was a little bit of a controversy uh, on how much the parts inside here would cost. Uh, it's no more than one hundred fifty dollars, but you put in software programming R and D uh, about per pair would be about two hundred dollars. So we started asking question, well, why is it still $1,500? And so we talked about that last night. You can go over to thisweekingoogleglass.com to find out more or twig.tv, T-W-I-G-G.tv to find out more about that. 
All right, uh, and, and uh, so it was great, and, and we had a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Uh, and, of course, if you go over to geekazine.com, you'll see this. In fact, I don't normally show this page, but let me show this. I don't think I have a full page here. But anyway, um, on GeekSmack, let me just duplicate this. Actually, I can do it this way. Let me do it this way. Um, over on GeekSmack, or on geekazine.com, excuse me, I've got an ad. Why would you just do that? I wanted you to do this. There we go. Um, I want to show you this really quick. This is the uh, this is the ad I'm running for our friends over at HP. This is the Elite Book 1040, the Elite Book Folio 1040 G1. And the thing is, with this G1, this is the this is the laptop I've got right here. It replaces my older HP, or I'm, yeah, my older HP uh, G series uh, laptop, which I got in 2009. I I bought that for the first year I went to CES because I wanted to have a laptop that could handle doing some video. And so I bought this uh, and it did a great job at the time. But, you know, that was 2009. It's now 2014. So I got this. Uh, they're, they're letting me borrow it to test out. And I'm going to be doing a review on this very soon. Uh, it's an awesome net, uh, Ultrabook. I was going to say netbook, but it's actually an Ultrabook. Uh, it's got an SSD drive in it. It can do Core i5, it can do Core i7, so I can get power off. I got a Core i5. I did the videos for last week's uh, TechCrunch Disrupt. I used this laptop, and uh, of course I used Sony Vegas, which I'm very happy on using. I, I like that over all the other programs. And uh, I got the videos done. I was really happy on the time that it took. About a five-minute video took with all the layers and, 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 uh, and correctional st software in there. Um, it took about 20 to 30 minutes to actually put a video out, and that's perfect for the time. If I would have had an i7, uh, yeah, it probably would be double that or, tri or, or half of that time, so 15 minutes. But, you know, they, they sent me the unit. I'm testing that out. I'm also testing out the RD6, which I thought I still had close by. Everything's still a mess because I still haven't found a good a good shelving system back here. I'm working on that right now. But anyway, the RD6, it's sitting around here somewhere. It's basically tape backup rather than... Where is it? I thought it was here. Interesting. So it's basically tape backup as opposed to uh, as opposed to a, a disc. And and it's really cool because these, uh, these... Oh, it's right there. Hello. <laughs> Let me show you this unit. It's really cool. It's USB 3.0 and it takes tapes. So this is the RDX unit. And I'm going to zoom in once again so you can see what's going on here. So th this is the unit I'm 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 hooking up to the Elite Book, and uh, of course in the power the the back we have power and we have a USB three input, and now these are the these are the cassettes, the cassette tapes, um, that come with it. And if you notice on the back here, take a look at this. Uh, I'll I'll even zoom it in more so you can see. It's you, it's it's not like a tape hookup. It's actually a, a SATA hookup. So it's it's hard to see, but basically you'll see it, it, it basically got the uh, if you've hooked up a SATA hard drive, uh, you've uh, you have those same connections. Now, can I hook this up into my computer like this? Probably not, but uh, I haven't really checked with them <laughs> on that and uh, and gone from there. So I got I got two terabytes, uh, two two terabyte uh, disks here, which of course I put into the RDX unit. And then I back up my software. I backed up this computer and my MacBook, and I'm gonna back up. Uh, I'm gonna back up a few more machines, and I'm gonna have that running backup because you want to have a multiple backup system. Um, and uh, technically, I should have a third tape. So every week I back up on the RDX with this tape, and then every month I pull this tape out and take the other tape and pl uh, plug it in. And then every year I take a third tape and plug it in. That way you have uh, multiple backups. So if you found that, you know, if you found that you had a virus on your computer, for example, and then you realized, well, that virus came in like six months ago, you can back up to a per, uh, the right time. So I'm going to be doing videos on that, on the uh, Folio, on the RDX, especially because these are supposed to be really rough. Um, even though the Folio says that, you know, it can go 10 below, it can go, uh, what was it, 140 degrees or something like that, um, and, uh, and, and, and can withhold some elements here. 
um, going through different uh, uh, tests here. 140 degrees uh, and minus 10 degrees. So you could actually be in a, in a cooler or something like that, or be out in the middle of the desert and use your laptop without issue. So anyway, uh, so that was that. I think we've got everything here. We're going to, well, like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to talk. And of course the feature we're going to talk about is Apple Beats. Yeah. Is, is Tim Cook kind of bringing the pirate into the things? Is he going to compete again with Apple? Or it brings some revitalization. You know, a lot of people are saying, you know, Apple's kind of stagnant. And they said that last year too, but you got to remember, he came out with a decent iPhone. Um, even though the 5C didn't work out too well, the 5S worked out awesome. And uh, and they can do it again. Everybody's really waiting for this watch. If they don't come out with the iWatch this year, then that might be a big problem. But I like with the direction that they're going. So other news that we're going to talk about today. Well, we're going to talk about, let's see, uh, um, Twitter having the mute button. I'm not exactly sure why they have a mute button. Xbox Gold to become free. Awesome stuff there. YouTube shutting down some of their RSS feeds. Um, the Godzilla collection. The Gmail's redesign. Google uh, European Union and their loss and what that means to you. And then color changing fabric, which might be the wave of the future. Well, definitely is the wave of the future. So, but all that and a lot more on Geeksmack. So I'm, I encourage you to stick around and watch. Now, when we hit the record button, I think the frame rate's going to jump down to 15 frames a second, and uh, and you'll see that little jump. I, I like I said to save my sanity. I'm just going to do it this way until I can figure out a new process with this. So, and I'm also testing cuz I do have Wirecast 5. I'm also testing some of the features of Wirecast 5 and hopefully I'll find something that won't make it look jittery and still give you a great show. So, all right. So as as of always, we will see this uh, that symbol and then that means hey, you just stick around in about 20 seconds. We'll come in and do the show. So you're watching Geek Smack. Thanks for walk for thanks a lot for watching the vlog, the V L O G of the show, and I appreciate it much. And we will be back it for Geek Smack episode number two hundred ninety nine. One away from three hundred. This is the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, geeks of all ages, welcome to Geek Smack the Show, where we smack the geek out of you like Apple smacking the beats out of you. Well, we're going to talk about Apple and the beats, that pairing. We're going to talk about the European Union. We're going to talk about Dogecoin. We're going to do all that and a whole bunch more. So let's get started. This is Geek Smack. And that was the test. We're going to do that again. This is the because I forgot to hit record. That's uh, I don't know. My brain was dead there. So here, let's do that again. This is the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. It's episode number 299 of Geek Smack, where we're going to smack the geek out of you like Apple smacking the beats out of, well, beats. We're going to talk about the Apple pairing and what that means. We're also going to talk about Samsung. We're going to talk about YouTube, uh, driverless cars, and a whole much more. This is Geek Smack. Let's smack it out right now. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, geeks of all ages, welcome to take two of Geek Smack. And if you watch youtube.com forward slash geekazine, you're going to find that I started the intro and it's like, oh, I forgot to press a button. Oh, we got to do this again. So we're doing it again. So here we are. We're doing it again. It's again. And now we're here. My name is Jeffrey Powers. If this is the first time you've come to the show, well, thank you very much for coming to the show. We do this every single Tuesday, absolutely live, absolutely free, and no magic involved for you and of course uh, the podcast itself goes down and on public record goes up on youtube goes up on blip.tv and goes up and uh, you can actually download it audio format you can download it in video format you can download it in shoebox format if what is
This is the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. It's episode number 299 of Geek Smack, the show where we smack the geek out of you like Apple smacks the beats out of, well, beats. We got that. We've, we're talking about Jam Boxes, Xbox, Samsung, AT&T, uh, Dodge coin, Doggy Coin or something like that. We've got a whole bunch, so let's get started now. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, geeks of all ages, we are now on take number three, and uh, something had happened. I guess my MacBook just kind of said, eh, I'm done. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Uh, something happened. Anyway, so Wirecast kind of completely froze and closed down, so we've got it back up. We've got the record button set. We've got the stream button set. Everything's good to go. YouTube.com forward slash Geekazine for the VLOG section, and of course, the actual show over at geekazine.com. If this is the first time that you've come to the show, well, I apologize. This is, this, this is the third intro. Uh, hopefully the problems happen at the beginning of the show, so when I go through the show and I'm like 80%, 90% done, it doesn't freak out on me and go from there. But something did happen. I'm not exactly sure what, but we're back up and running. Everything looks like it's good to go. We're going we're gonna to continue on from there. We do the show every single Tuesday for Wednesday Consumption, live, absolutely live, on uh, on YouTube.com forward slash Geekazine at about 2 p.m. Eastern time. So you can come over here, enjoy the show, and then you don't need to uh, you don't need to do anything after that. Or if you do want to download it, audio and video format, you can both get them on Tech Podcasts, you can get them on Stitcher, iTunes, all that other great stuff. So uh, and we go from there. I'm not like I said. I'm not exactly sure what happened with the freeze, but we did freeze there, so I do apologize. Um, looks like everything is back up and running, and I'm going to be checking the processes as we go. But anyway, uh, so thanks a lot for watching. Uh, really quick, what we talk about on the main on the vlog section, uh, I talk about basically last week. I was in New York for TechCrunch Disrupt. Got a lot of great videos. Awesome, awesome week. At the end of the week, my back seized up, and I've kind of been keeping things minimal in the last couple days because I hurt really bad. So, um, but now my back's feeling a little bit better. I can get going. I got a little bit more energy and go from there. Um, also talked about uh, all the pictures that I took. Talked about a cool score that we got, a little honey hole that we found when we did some garage sailing on Friday. Um, talking about my new, the new laptop that uh, HP sent me to review called the Elite Book 1040. And of course, this little puppy right here is called the RDX. It's tape backup system. And it's really cool because look at these tapes. These are the tapes, but they have like the SATA imports inputs. So uh, I, it's interesting how it all sets up. So I'm going to be doing some reviews on that in the upcoming uh, area. And then, of course, I got my new glass, and I've been showing this off new glass versus the old glass. Um, this is with the 80s Oakley style uh, lenses in there and then of course uh, the new accessory was the new uh the new look of the lenses as you can see is different i like to call the blue blocker uh lenses because they look like those 1990s blue blockers that you got from the uh from online if, if you've ever if you've ever watched infomercials you know exactly what i'm talking about uh twig this week in google glass we talked all about that in the teardown which showed that it was about 150 dollars worth of parts inside of glass so check that out over at twig.tv twigg.tv or this week in google glass.com and uh, that's pretty much it for the that vlog section you'll see and hear a lot more if you go to youtube.com forward slash geekazine but we're talking about tech news we're going to talk about apple and beats um, but we've got some other tech news to get through so we're going to do that and so let's get into the tech smack version of geek smack And it's brought to you by our friends over at Carbonite.com because we want to survive those computer disasters. You know, I have multiple computers here. I have a MacBook here. I have HP. I have two HPs now. I have the desktop over here. I've got an iPad over there. I've got computers over here. I've got hard drives upon hard drives upon hard drives worth of data that I do backup. And I do a multi-backup system because, you know, I was an IT administrator. I knew uh, they have a, what's called a seven-layer backup. 
So you have a weekly backup, you have a monthly backup, you have a six month backup and a yearly backup. What that means is at any point in time, I could go back to a certain area. Let's say I got a virus today and I didn't find out about it three, four months from now. I can go back to that area. But I add another level to my backup plan and that is an offsite backup because you never know fire, theft, uh, flooding. You know, we just had some really awesome rainstorms that passed through here. But what if my roof decided to give way and all of a sudden it started leaking right where my computers are and destroy my computers? It can happen. Maybe I have a computer in the basement and I don't know, my, my foundation starts to leak and all of a sudden the water is just all over that computer. What do I do? What do I, how do I save that data? Well, usually I'd send the drives out somewhere and pay a few thousand dollars per drive to get the data pulled from it. That's, that's how much it can cost for just one drive, a couple thousand dollars. So back it up off site and you can use a service such as carbonite.com and they back up your stuff. You can back up one system. You can back up multiple systems. They have price plans for everything. Now, if you're just one, if you just have one computer in your house, then go over to geekazine.com forward slash carbon free. They'll give you a 15 day free trial to test it out. See if it works. You load a program on the computer. It backs it up when you're not in, in front of the computer. And then you can use it. You can even access it. Let's say you have your iPad in New York City and you need to access a file that was on this computer over here. All you have to do is go up to Carbonite, find the backup, and bring it down, and you can use that. That's pretty cool. You can have your pictures on in your backup that you can pull onto your iPad or your, or your phone or something like that and go from there. If you are a business, remember geekazine.com forward slash Carbonite, geekazine.com forward slash Carbonite, and you'll get a great deal, around $300 a year with, for uh, your small to medium business. Of course, scale uh, if you've got more computers than that. So that's over at Carbonite. Remember geekazine.com forward slash Carbon Free for a 15-day trial, or geekazine.com forward slash Carbonite for your small to medium business. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's get into the news for the week. And we're going to start over at our friends at Venture Beat because now you can take two. And, and I didn't, you know, I, I love it when somebody thinks outside the box, or in this case, thinks outside the jam box. And what they decided, what they realized is hey, what if we took two jam boxes and jammed them together? So you can you can use them as uh, separate stere stereo speakers, or maybe have one jam box in the living room, one jam box in the kitchen, so you're not missing out on the sound. Well, Jambox has decided that uh, that they're going to do this, and they've created this great option. You buy two jam boxes, they'll pair with each other, and then they'll become separate speakers. And you know, I love it because it's like I said, it's some I, I didn't think about that. But, you know, I would buy two uh, jam boxes and do that. I have one in the kitchen, have one in the living room or something like that, or in the bedroom. Now, this is the best part. You could have two jam boxes at both sides of the bed. And then uh, Jennifer could have it at her volume. I could have it at my volume. And then I, I like to fall asleep. She likes to watch, continue to watch on the iPad. We could, I could actually turn off my jam box turn off the sound. She could turn it down low on her side. So she still has audio coming to her and I don't have it at all. So I can fall asleep because I can't fall asleep with the TV on. I, I rarely do. Yeah, I, I, I have in the past. Yeah. But I rarely do once the TV's on. I got to watch whatever TV or iPad programs going on with her. She has the iPad over here. So I barely see it. And with the, with the jam box, she could actually be hearing what's going on. She can fall asleep. I can fall asleep. We're, we're both happy. So I can't wait to see how this works here. If you want to read more on that, go over to VentureBeat.com and go from there. Well, let's go over to New USA Today. Twitter's adding a, a mute option to users. Uh, instead of blocking somebody, you can now mute them. And uh, it's uh, it, it doesn't make sense to me. If you don't like what somebody's doing, you just you basically unfriend them. And if they continue to send stuff, for, uh, then you've got to change your setting. Like, for instance, the d direct message. If you have your direct messages so anybody can send you a message, turn it off. But I don't understand the mute button. It's, it's a great option in Facebook. It's a great option possibly in Google+. Plus. They don't have a mute button that I know of. But when it comes to Twitter, I don't, I don't see why they would need a mute button. It doesn't make sense to me. 
why there's a mute button. So um, I don't, it, it's, I, it, you still got the block function. And if somebody is being that annoying, I will block them. But why would I mute them? I'll unfriend them and I'll block them. But I, I just don't get it. But somebody please explain to me why Twitter needs a mute button. Um, unless they're planning to, to grow or something like that. And uh, explain it to me. Let me know. You can Twitter me over at Geekazine. Think Magazine. Put in a geek. Or Geekazine at gmail.com. And then the hotline is 608-205-4378. Do you like the idea of a mute button? I don't understand the idea of a mute button in Twitter. I might be wrong. I might end up using it uh, and start going, oh, yeah, this is the best thing since sliced bread. You never know. So, But let me know, and uh, maybe I'll be able to wrap my brain around it. All right, let's move on from there. We're going over to Kotaku, and this is something that I've been asking, asking Xbox to do. And they will be doing it in the upcoming one. I think they're going to announce it at E3. Uh, multiple sources within Microsoft. Hopefully they're not the two sources that uh, that TechCrunch used to find out about Google+. Anyway, multiple sources within Microsoft saying that Microsoft is going to ditch ditch the Xbox Live Gold access. And if you never, if you didn't have an Xbox, basically, if you wanted to watch Netflix, if you wanted to watch Hulu on your Xbox 360 or Xbox One, you had to pay sixty dollars a year to do it. And it it boggled my mind. I can get a Roku, I can get a, a Fire TV, and pay the hundred dollars for that, and get more than what Xbox could offer for over-the-top television, and save myself on that sixty bucks. So now they're by ditching this live gold ser service, you can now watch through your Xbox, and they can become the all-in-one entertainment system that they really want to be. And I think that's because of Fire TV that came out. I mean, I've been playing some of the games on Fire TV, and I'm starting to think to myself, well, if I can put together three or four controllers through the Fire TV and have a good game where I can download almost instantly, uh, being a, similar to a first-person shooter, or a first-person shooter for that matter, any type of game that could run onto a, a, a phone of today, then why not? Why do I need a game console? Because I can't get Netflix and Hulu off the game console. Can't do Pandora. I still got to pay 60 bucks for that a year. And it's not even for that service. So they're ditching that. I'm, And, of course, it's going to be announced at E3. We'll see what happens. It is a rumor. So just you know, take it with a grain of salt. But I'm really excited if they decide to do that. Because that will mean I'll start using my Xbox uh, a little bit more and go from there. If you want to read more on that, go over to Kotaku.com. K-O-T-A-K-U dot com. Of course, let me know. What do you think? Do you like this? Twitter me at Geekazine. And of course, Geekazine at gmail.com. All right. Next up, we've got Samsung unveiling the 1.5 terabit terabyte wireless media streaming device. What this means is a device. This is actually pretty cool because I could take this device. I could take this device with me. And I could put it onto a network, and we could have we could have storage. Um, if uh, if I share if I send out videos and I put it on here, they can grab those videos and use clips and stuff like that. Uh, I I can have I can take the cloud drive with me and use it as uh, however I use it for. And the best part is it, the price is really nice at one hundred seventy nine dollars. It can stream media content to smartphones or computers. So and I think that. Yeah, I think that it does a, uh, a wireless, peer-to-peer -peer wireless uh, situation. So you can, you know, if I have a video, I could go to TechCrunch Disrupt. I could take all my videos and then I could put it onto this little device right here and put it on the network and say, you want to watch it right now? Here it is. And of course, it'll push. It, it won't go out to the, the internet. It'll push internally. So you can watch those videos here and now through that little device. So really excited. And like I said, it's it's got a great price at uh, $179. It uses uh, USB 3.0 port transferring for content, um, and you can do it through Wi-Fi. So uh, awesome, awesome. I'm, I'm definitely going to be looking at that. If you want to check out more, we've got that over at ndtv.com, gadgets.ndtv.com. But we have all the links in the show notes. Go over to geekazine.com. Go to the show notes, subscribe to the show notes so they come to your email box. It makes it even easier for you to get into the show and go from there. 
Let's move on. Let's go over to Ars Technica. YouTube is now, now this article talks about YouTube shutting now public RSS feeds. Um, and uh, first of all, we'll talk about that really quick. Uh, apparently they, they quietly shut it down. So if you, uh, if you wanted to find special feeds or something like that, uh, find the best videos or something like that, you can't do that. However, not all the RSS feeds are down. And I, and I checked that because what I've been doing is I've been running a little test and I'm going to show you this little twist, test really test really quick. Um, I've been trying to figure out how to bring over my YouTube videos a little bit faster, a little bit better. And of course I have different areas of my YouTube videos. So I created uh, my news area, Geekazine News. And what that does is it uses RSS to pull the videos in and create posts. Now, as you can see, the latest episode of Geek Smack Live, which is happening right now, has already uploaded automatically to this news.geekazine.com uh, website, which will eventually become videos.geekazine.com um, as this test is going. But as you can see, uh, last night's twig is up there. Uh, the video from TechCrunch Disrupt, it's still using, and it's still using RSS feeds to pull these videos from. So I'm not exactly sure how this is working from that article, but I know that certain certain feeds are still up. You can still pull content out, and I really hope that that, that doesn't go away because that's if, if that works, I'm going to be doing a lot of more automated content. So you, uh, basically what would happen is you get that video up on YouTube, and within an hour... That that video could be placed up onto your uh, up on your website. You go and you edit, maybe add a couple hundred words uh, down the line or something like that. But at least the videos are going up. So when I post a video, I don't have to go this site and post stuff, this site and post stuff, this site and post stuff. It's just uh, there's too much separation in the internet today. Uh, and even though a lot of websites communicate with each other, there are certain ones that don't, and it, it's it's really frustrating. But I like this option, and I'm going to be using it a little bit more. Hopefully, it won't totally go away. So, um, and I think a lot of people are going to lose uh, if they if they run on this model with the RSS feeds. They might have a problem coming back here. Uh, but maybe it's also uh, the impending doom of the RSS feed. Uh, I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens here. Um, as podcasters, we don't see that happening. Uh, the doom of the R RSS feed, but. We, we definitely have to keep that in mind just in case, you know, so one day Google says, no, nah, we're not even going to deal with RSS feeds anymore. We're gonna, we got a new system here that we're working out and go from there. So what do you think? Do you think the RSS feed? Um, I know a lot of you don't use host or I'm sorry. Uh, um, what were the, the old RSS feeds like Gator and uh, News Gator? That was it. News Gator and Pod, uh, Pod, uh, Pod Lime or something like that. Um, of course, I Google used a lot of RSS feeds to pulling content into one area. So, what's your thoughts on that? Do you think uh, do you think uh, that it's it's gearing towards an RSS less uh, nation, or are we gonna get into something new? Let me know. Twitter me over at Geekazine, of course, Geekazine at Gmail dot com. All right, I think this is the last article. Let me just check really quick. Yeah, this is the last article of the Tech Smack, and then, of course, we'll get you in the Geek Smack. Facebook has removed two of its apps. One app, I'm kind of con I'm kind of trying to figure out why they removed it. The other one, we're going to have to say goodbye. So let's, let's take a moment here. We're going to take a second and say goodbye to the poke. Okay. If... <laughs> The poke can get very annoying in some cases. The poke can get can be very useful. There was only one person I poked in Facebook, and that was Jennifer, uh, or a girlfriend, or at that time at the time. But Jennifer is the only person I poke, um, and you know it. It's kind of strange when guys poke me. It's like, yeah, wait a minute, I don't like that. No, no, not at all. So, um, but you know, hey. You know, some people use the poke option. They like the poke option, but they found out that it wasn't working as well. So basically, uh, Facebook has decided, okay, it's time to get rid of the poke. And of course, this. And uh, Facebook camera, I understand why Facebook cameras got removed because they have Instagram and they want you to use Instagram over Facebook photos. Uh, but, uh, our Facebook camera. But I don't like the fact that I have to go to another app and do that. 
So, and I know that Facebook has said that Instagram is going to be separate from Facebook, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to use Instagram that much. I rarely do to begin with. Um, and I'm not going to do it even more now that this Facebook camera is gone. I, in fact, I, I rarely use Facebook camera for that matter. But uh, as long as the features that were in Facebook camera move over to Instagram, I'll be fine with that, I suppose. But these were two, uh, these were two fe features that just didn't have the use anymore, especially with the new Facebook designs. Poke, Poke was kind of pushed off into the corner there, so... Sad to see it go, but you know, it, it was time for it to go. And uh, so, too bad. So sad. Time to move on. Lots of, lots of things happen. So, anyway, tell me, do you have disdain for the fact that the poke button's gone? Let me know. Twitter me over at Geekazine. Of course, Geekazine at gmail.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, geeks of all ages, that does it for the first part of, Texma of Geek Smack, the Tech Smack part. We're going to get into the Geek Smack part. And we're going to talk, and of course, we're going to talk about what's going on with Apple and Beats, why I think it's a great idea, and what they can do, uh, what we can see from that, and go from there. But first of all, we've got a second, and we're going to get into Geek Smack, and we're going to do that in a second. So we'll be right back. You are watching Geek Smack. All right, and, and of course, Geek Smack's brought to you by our friends over at Yes Video. It looks like they redesigned their website, so congratulations to Yes Video, um, where you can back up and you can get your your videos, your eight millimeter videos, your um, your VHS videos. <laughs> I can't even think of the tapes. You know, the that old archaic stuff. You know, we say I'm going to push that to tape. No, no, you're not pushing it to tape because you know video cassettes. They're, they need to be they need to be taken care of because film dies. Video cassettes dies after a period of time. It gets harder to pull that stuff off of. Film reels, if you've got them in a basement and and it gets really dry, or once again you get flood, and all of a sudden all that stuff is destroyed. Take your mom memories and put them on digital right now, and that's what Yes Video is all about. Check it out. You can put it onto your iPad. You take these stuff. And you, you send it to them. Tapes, you send the discs to them, whatever you have it on. And what they do is they digitize it and put it into an area that you can curate from. You can then take those videos, you can download those videos, you can put them onto, uh, you can put them onto YouTube, make funny little things with YouTube on that. Maybe, maybe the next Charlie bit my finger type uh, thing is going to come from there. But then you'll be able to take your memories and share them. And you can share them with other people friends and family. So everybody gets to see this video instead of having to come over to the house and you have to figure out how to put the eight millimeter projector together and then you break the film halfway through. So check it out. Uh, go over to geekazine.com forward slash yes. Geekazine.com forward slash yes. You can get 20% by using promo code 20TR, 20 Thomas Riley TR. Um, that will get you 20% off of preserving your memories online. And that's over at Yes Video, geekazine.com forward slash yes. All right, let's get back into the news. And then, of course, we're going to get, well, before we get in the news, let's talk about the Geekedia of the week. So let's do it. This week's Geekedia, of course, Godzilla is coming to theaters. Oh, Godzilla. So I found this right here, the Godzilla Collection 2012. It's got some of your favorite Godzilla memories in there. Uh, you know, Godzilla versus, uh, was it Mothra, Godzilla, King Kong, and stuff like that. Um, you can get it all on Amazon um, and get ready for Godzilla and go from there. So lots of, lots of cool stuff. The product details, uh, it's got multiple formats, box set. It's closed caption, color, full screen. Uh, widescreen. Um, they've got language, uh, English language and Japanese language. There's no rating on it because, of course, these are uh, these are these are '60s overseas films. So yeah, they're somebody's. It's not going to get too weird. Um, it's just going to be a guy in a in a in a in a in a suit knocking down cardboard buildings and stuff like that. But they're always fun to watch. And of course, some of the uh, reviews: Mothra versus Godzilla, Terra of Mecha. 
Mecha Godzilla, uh, Gojira, Godzilla King of the Monsters. Um, just lots of great little video videos all in this collection. So you can get it. Well, of course, go over to geekazine.com, click on the link, and that'll keep the lights running for me. So I thank you very much uh, for that. So let's get that's uh, that's that. So let's get on with the show. Where am I? What am I doing? What? Are, what? Huh? Okay. Of course, we're going to talk about Apple Beats in a second here. But first of all, let's talk about Gizmodo. And I don't think this is going to come out. Uh, driverless should driverless cars uh, kill you to save other people? And now you, this is an actual interesting dilemma because you're in a driverless car, and the driverless car has to start thinking for itself. And sometimes is the best situation to save two lives to take your life away. Now I'm going to tell you a story. I I was very in a very interesting accident years ago. I had a Pontiac Grand Am at the time. I think this was about 2006 or 2007. No, it was earlier than that. It was like 2003, 2004, somewhere around there. Um, I was driving a Pontiac Grand Am. I was driving to a friend's house who lives about 30 miles outside of Madison. So you take a highway to get there. And it was raining. And there were two semis in front of me. And this is, of course, two lanes. And uh, the sem one semi was passing the second semi. So they were pretty much even in the lanes. And then there was a truck that came this way. And the guy in the truck was drunk and he fell asleep. He then crossed the island and the island had this little dip. So the truck and I watched this as this truck turned and went down. I'll never forget that. Uh, went down, went up, jumped in the area. Now, at this time, Semi over here realized what was going on, slamming on his brakes, knows he can't get anywhere, and starts to jackknife. The truck comes in and gets completely obliterated. The other truck is, is of course, trying to stop. It's raining too hard. I'm, I'm holding on the brakes, but I'm hydroplaning like no tomorrow. And I go through... And I'm watching, I'm, I completely missed the jackknife. The, that truck ends up on its side in the island ditch. And I watch, a tr I don't know if, if it was truck's transmission or whatnot, but that transmission literally rolled right above the car and over the car. And I, I cause I decided, well, I'm just going to figure it out and plow through it. Cause that's the best, my, my best option. I cannot stop. And if I stop, I'm pretty much screwed. So I go through. And I watch that transmission fly over my head and I go and I, I park. I look at my car, not a scratch on it. I look at me, not a scratch on me. The guy, the guy in the truck, it was basically compacted. He's still alive, but he can't get out. They need the jaws of life to get him out. So my, so with all that said, now I've got to, now I, I go back to this article and, and I, I think to myself, what would a driverless car do? Would it, would it think like I do? to get through that accident without a scratch. You know, and I, I took a risk. I mean, I could have literally, if if I would have bolted a little bit uh, faster, that that uh, that transmission would be coming right, right through the windshield. And I might have knocked my head off or something like that. But I decided that the best solution, I can't stop right. I'm going to get in an accident myself. And this transmission is going to, I don't know what, what, I don't know what's going to happen. So I bolted through and that's what happened. So what would a driverless car do? And would it say, okay, to save the, let's say there's three people in that truck to save those people's lives. Will I risk my life? Now here's on the, here's the, the adverse of that. It, those, those people are completely drunk and driving, doing something illegal. Should I lose my life because they're the ones that are drunk and, and creating an accident like this? So it, it goes back and forth, but I read through this. Um, if and, and one of the reasons why I don't really care too much for driverless cars right now, but because I want to choose how I make the decisions on that accident. And I don't think a driverless car would have made the decisions I made to get through that accident and survive. I think that it would have put on the brakes. It would have noticed that it's hydroplaning. It would have tried to do something to not hydroplane. And that transmission that went over the car 
would have been through my windshield and maybe even knocked my head off. I think of it that way. That way. It's, it's kind of weird, but, you know, I, I, I have dreams about that accident. And it's 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 crazy, but uh, um, it's 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 interesting. And to think about how a driverless car would handle that as opposed to me, I don't know. I would uh, I would definitely. I'm not a big fan of driverless cars. Driver assist cars, I'm I'm good with. So if I can take over the steering wheel at a moment's notice, I'm good with that. If if I can't, and I and I leave it up to that thing to try and figure out my fate, I'd have a problem with that. But Interesting article, very thought provoking. Go over to gizmodo.com for that, of course, there. All right, let's move on. We're going over to CNET.com. AT&T is looking to buy DirecTV for $50 billion. Uh, DirecTV, I'm not sure, is DirecTV, I think it's Dish TV that has Blockbuster. So DirecTV, of course, satellite television uh, would become part of AT&T's deal. So you'd probably get more paperwork and say, hey, now we're, we've got DirecTV, go satellite. And and maybe even they would figure out some sort of alternate, you know, you you put a dish on your house, you also have the AT&C service inside the house to make it even better. So they might even compete with cable TV, especially when it comes to, to internet data rates, because I would never buy AT&T for my internet. It just, it, it looks horrible. Even though, okay, I, I said this on the vlog, Charter has now moved to this charter spectrum. It's all digital, TV's all digital. You can't plug in a t uh, regular TV and get channels. You need a cable box now. Um, but because of that, they've uh, they've created they've created charter spectrum, which basically doubled my internet speeds for downloads. Unfortunately, not for uploads. And I really need I got four megabytes for uploads. I really need six. If I have six, I'd be happy. But uh, I, I would figure that if you double the download, you double the upload. But that wasn't the case there. So um, whoever whoever can get me like 100 megs down, 10 up, I might just go with that service. Especially, well, it's also got to be a decent price. I mean, if it's like $300, I'm not going to do it. Simple as that. But I need that so I can stream these videos to you guys, so I can do what I'm doing and get this stuff out to you. So, But anyway, uh, AT&T with DirecTV, uh, interesting. We'll see how this works out. Of course, it's gotta go through all the regulatory and information, all that other blah, blah, blah stuff. And uh, it, But in the end, it might just expand on what AT&T is offering. So we'll see what happens and, and keep you abreast of the situation. What are your thoughts on it? Let me know, Twitter me over, Geekazine, of course, geekazine at gmail.com. Now, get this. Apparently, whenever, I don't care who you are, if you've patented something that doesn't make any sense to have our patent on, I'm going to call you out. Amazon, I'm calling you out. Apparently, and uh, I don't know if this probably doesn't show up too well. Apparently, Amazon has, and this is over on geek.com, Amazon has decided to uh, patent, uh, come out with a patent for a white background for photographs. Now, I don't know. That's kind of happened you know, even before Amazon existed. So who in the patent office has decided that this is okay to do? So if I had, if I had a wet, white background behind me and nothing behind me, just white and then me talking, like all the Apple commercials, then, uh, you know, apparently they've got a patent on it and I've got to pay them to send these pictures and it's video it's for photos i don't know if it's also for video I, I believe it's all types of of photography and uh that also means if i if i put up a product like if i take this google glass and i set it in a what's called a white box and i take a picture of this i've got to pay amazon to do that to to actually post to have that picture and it's like what that's crazy so I don't know. They got now they've got a patent photography against a white background. Amazon, if if anything, just let it go. If you want the patent, open source the patent and just say, hey, we have the patent. It's all open source now. And we're all good. But I cannot believe that they got away with this. I really can't. So I just, I, I don't get it. But anyway, what do you think? Uh do you use white backgrounds? 
Are you going to start switching it to something else? I don't know if green if you green screen it and then change the green to white. I don't know if that counts on that or not, but uh, it's it's sad. It's sad. So we got this over at geek.com. Let me know what you think about that. Geekazine is the Twitter handle. All right. Google's got a drastic Gmail design happening. And of course, they're also coming to uh, browsers and mobile devices. The new features uh, that they're testing in the Gmail client are going to start coming in to, into your services. Uh, they're testing the uh, features uh, to the web-based Gmail client, uh, you'll be able to take uh, you'll be able to take some screenshots of the res- design. Uh, you, uh, and let's say you could unify the Gmail experience across multiple devices, which actually I kind of like that because when I look at the Gmail on my phone, I I don't have that same experience, and and therefore, whoops, some of the emails go across and I, I don't read all of them. It does have, you know, like the promotion stuff. I use the, the, the tabs that they have up on top of Gmail. Uh, I put promotions and I have promotions and forums. So if I belong to a forum, like a LinkedIn forum or something like that, I push all of those to the forums. If I have a promotion, like somebody saying, Hey, you know, check out this remote control. It's coming out next week. I'll put them into the promotions folder. What, what that means is I can then mass delete all of anything on promotions and anything on forms once I've read them. And it organizes my inbox a little bit better. So the important email stays in the email part and then the rest. And then sometimes when promotions start to cross, like for instance, if I, if I have a sponsor and they say, Hey, you know, here's your bill or something like that. I can then move it over and not move the whole thing over just the, the one offs and go from there. So, um, we'll see how the Gmail redesign happens in the, uh, Gmail client if you see it and you know what it's what it's all about, let me know. Twitter me at Geekazine, of course, Geekazine at gmail.com. All right, let's move on from there. Uh, apparently, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Office, uh, they announced Office for iPad, and the first pricing was horrible. I hated it. Their second pricing uh, for one-offs was great because now I could put Office on one computer and my iPad and I could be able to do the editing. And it was something like $7 a month or something like that. It was a lot better. And I was really excited. And apparently other people were really excited too. Because within the first uh, 46 days, they've uh, got about 27 million downloads. Now, that's downloads. That doesn't mean that anybody's done any services just yet. That just means that... And, and I have it on my iPad. I have, I have the apps downloaded on my iPad. I haven't gotten the services yet. So... Um, I'm not sure if 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 that is what they're taking into account. Uh, they said Office for iPad picked up 15 million dollar downloads of their applications, and now that's 15 million of their applications. So, and of course, with iPad, they're all separate. Word's separate from Excel, and Excel's separate from PowerPoint. And then you download them all. So, does that mean 15 million divided by three? It turns out to be only five million uh, people downloaded iPad apps. Um, but Microsoft reported uh, 12 million in early April and 27 million as of today. So we'll see how that works out. So there's a lot of big questions. Like I said, if only 5 million people download three apps each and half of those, one third of those, don't even subscribe to the Office 365, then those numbers don't mean a darn thing. But if 27 million people download uh, one or three apps and then get the service, that makes a difference. So if you want to read more, we got that article over on TechCrunch.com. All right, going over, moving over to New York Times. Um, Google has been, uh, and this is for uh, the Europeans, uh, all across the seas, the European Union decided on Tuesday that Google will grant users of the search engine right or rights to actually delete search engine information about themselves. So like, for instance, if I didn't want a geekazine on, on Google, I'd send them a, uh, a letter or, you know, form or whatever it is and say, wipe out geekazine. And then they have to comply if I was in Europe. So I'm not exactly sure why they're doing that. Uh, search engine is search engine, you know, unless, unless you've got pages, it, you should basically privatize your, your pages if you don't want other people to find your website. But, you know, However it is, that's that's what some people want. The European Court of Justice in Luxembourg 
Um, this is, I suppose this is more for Pirate Bay and stuff like that. So they can work underneath the radar, possibly. So uh, they made the ruling. So if you're in the year, if, uh, I don't know how that's going to come into the United States or not. But uh, if you want to read more on that, we've got the link over at the New York Times.com. All right. Have you ever heard of Doggy Coin? <laughs> I, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's, it, it's D O G E coin. Uh, so it's either doggy coin or dodge coin because if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a coin. But I think it's doggy coin because they have a dog as a mascot. Uh, apparently, their website is no longer available. Now this is a virtual commerce site. Uh, their 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 website's no longer available. Uh, you can't make any withdrawals. Um, and they say that. And this is the this is their mascot mascot. Excuse me. And they basically said that there's possibility that Doggy Coin got hacked, and the website is down right now, just to make sure that more currency hasn't been taken. So uh, a press release is posted within 24 hours, saying that the website is please do not transfer any funds to uh, Doggy Vault addresses while our investigations are underway. So if you have Doggy Coins, please explain to me what a Doggy Coin is. Twitter me at geekyzine geekazine at gmail.com. And uh, this is the first time, you know, virtual currency. There's different virtual currencies out there. First time I heard about doggy coins. So, so sad to hear, but hopefully you didn't lose any uh, any coins uh, through doggy coins uh, that you lost. So anyway, let's move on. Last article of the day, device.com. Imagine if I could take this shirt and change it to a different color. Green, gray, purple, whatever. Well, that's what they're working on, and that's what they're doing over at uh, over at this area. It's uh, it, and if you remember correctly, the uh, was it the movie uh, Back to the Future? In Back to the Future Two, Marty had somewhat of a color changing shirt. This one, you could actually say, "Hey, I want the purple to be blue. I want the purple to be white. Whatever." And it's it's using, as you can see, little electronics that is kind of too big for a sh uh, shirt right now. But this is perfect for drapes. You know, I could imagine, you know, these curtains right behind me, right now they're brown. But if I have this cloth right behind me, and then, of course, the, the electronics running on a rail on the on the back, I could change the color of this uh, and, you know, maybe have it change colors as, as I'm talking back and forth. That'd be kind of cool, right? I don't know. So uh, they're, they're working on there. They got uh, they got the cloth hooked up to Adreno microcontroller that's connected to a power supply. The wires heat up and, and in response to sound, and so the temperature changes, and making the dye change and the fabric change color. So pretty cool stuff, and I'm I'm pretty excited to see this happen. And this would be perfect, like I said, a theater situation, a background situation for me. I'm probably not wearing clothing as of yet. Once the electronics get smaller, yeah, I suppose that could happen. So. But anyway, that's over on device.com. You can check it out there. All right, that does it for the Geek Smack part of the show. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about Apple and Beats and the Apple Beat and how it's all working and why I think it's a good idea. And we're going to talk about that, and we're going to do that right after this. You're watching Geek Smack. You know, it's more than just 750 channels that the Roku can offer that gives you all that content. Each channel can have sub-channels in it, so you can have tens of thousands of hours of video watching and game playing out of your Roku. And prices only start at $49.99. Of course, the Roku 3 for $99.99, and of course you can get the games, you get the game remote as well, and then the privacy mode where you can plug in your headphones right in the remote that's perfect for when your partner is sleeping, but you want to watch something on TV. Lots of great stuff uh, from Angry Birds to Amazon to Hulu and, of course, the Tech Podcast channel. Let me show you this really quick. This is how you get to some of the content uh, uh, from Geekazine on the Tech Podcast channel. You just go into the Tech Podcast video, and you're going to go into Tech News, and you're going to find, like, the special events, iPad 365, Geek Smack, and a whole bunch more. A lot of other tech podcast shows right on that Roku for you, right at your fingertips, right through the remote. And then, of course, you can get your Netflix, you can get your Amazon, you can get your Hulu just as easy, and many more channels, PBS, 
We've got Redbot Instant, TV Guide, Sci-Fi Channel, and much more. Check it out. It's all over at Roku. Remember, geekazine.com forward slash Roku. Of course, that helps me keep the lights on for all my shows. Thank you very much. And go over where streaming is made simple. Monster must be kicking themselves or hmm, possibly trying to figure out a counterattack because Apple came in and uh, kind of took away the Beats line uh, for them for about $3.2 billion. This will make Dr. Dre the first hip-hop billionaire. Um, and he kind of deserves it for making a device that everybody kind of really wants. Now, people are scratching their heads and even criticizing Apple and saying, you know, why are they getting this headphone giant? Uh, they don't really need Beats. Yet, it's more than just a company that they bought out. It's major competition. Now, this year, uh, that was on January 21st, Beats launched their own major music service in uh, to compete with Apple iTunes. And it might be the way that Apple finally will break down that walled garden that they have with iTunes. Beats music being that hammer. Now, I'm going to call it iBeats because, you know, it's there. iBeats music might become the first cross-platform music system for Apple. And, of course, because they've already have the app out for Android and, for, I believe, for Windows. Not to mention they'd strengthen their their uh, their partnership with AT&T since Beats Music already works with the service. Now imagine imagine some of your new Android users that, you know, switched from iPhone to Android like I did, finally being able to bring over some of those songs you purchased on iTunes when you did have your iPhone. It's more than just iTunes and headphones though. It's about all things audio. Let's look at it through the automotive industry. Apple now has a major car audio system that could rival Sony, that could rival Carmen Hardin, and some other in-car speaker manufacturers. This could bring a new competition into the in-computer car business. Maybe even Apple Vios, in-vehicle Apple operating system. Beats is a top brand. The average headphones costs consumers about $100 or more. I know that there's some that are a few hundred dollars and up to the thousands for Beats headphones. Celebrities, sports stars are already publicly wearing those headphones. The exposure alone might be worth that $3.2 billion. The Verge is even hinting that the acquisition wasn't as much for the headphones as it was for possible wearable technology standpoint. They speculate that the purchase was for Dr. Dre and Jimmy Eovine, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, to eventually promote the upcoming Apple iWatch. Jimmy Eovine, you might have seen him on, uh, he, uh, he was on one season of American Idol, if I remember correctly. Now still, Beats brings entry into areas that Apple hasn't been in. It definitely takes Apple further down that music rabbit hole. New iPhones could get headphones everyone wants and a cross-platform music system that could change the whole landscape in mobile technology. If anything, think of it this way. Facebook bought Instagram for the users, even though they already made a program to compete with Instagram. While Beats only did about 10 million pair last year, that's 10 million possible new users to MacBooks, iPhones, Mac Pros, and more. That's something to think about. Uh, you know, you in, in you in, uh, in vital, uh, not in vitalize, but you uh, you insert something new into something old, and you think about it. Your, your iPhone will now have in the, maybe in the bottom corner will have a little B for the your audio now owned by Beats as opposed to whatever audio that they had. And those headphones, I mean, I I use my iPhone headphones even though I still don't have my iPhone headphones, but it'd be really cool if I could get a Beats headphones because I know that they're going to have better sound in them. So, But what do you think? Do you think this is a good idea for Apple to make the purchase of Beats? Let me know. Twitter me over at Geekazine. Of course, geekazine at gmail.com. And the hotline is 608-205-4378. That does it for this episode of Geek Smack. What'd you think? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know. And we'll go from there. Um, and of course, we're going to be back next week. We're going to have episode number 300 
next week. Have <laughs> 300. We I've gone through 300 episodes of this show all the way back to October of 2007. So the show's been on for a long time. I'd like to thank everybody that's watched the show. I'd like to thank everybody that's listened to the show. Um, new new subscribers, old subscribers, everything. Um, hopefully uh, some of you will come back and check out the 300th episode. I'll definitely be promoting it over on Geekazine. We've got a lot of great video over at Geekazine from TechCrunch Disrupt. So go over there, check that out. See some of the new startups that are coming. We've got some really cool stuff coming down as I post it. And we'll go from there. But thanks a lot for watching the live version. Of course, recorded uh, audio or video, however you watched it. We will be back next week. Like I said, episode 300. We'll smack the geek out of you and, uh, and do a lot more. So thanks a lot for watching. And you guys, geek out and take care.